Brian, congratulations. Thank you. Off and running. Fairly steady performance. How would you rate it? Um, probably rate that a 5 out of 10. Um, obviously, Willie played well in his first game, and I was expecting probably a little bit more from him. Um, the crowd were ridiculously loud, considering it's a, like the first game in the afternoon. And maybe that put him off a little bit, but obviously, you know, 92 average is rubbish, really. Um, but look, you can do nothing more than win. It's a 3 0 win. Um, I, took my, I took my chances at the right time. And, uh, you know, I'm looking to go, you know, a lot further in the tournament than where I am now. Do you feel that first leg killed his confidence, missing six darts and the way you stepped in? Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, the first leg of a match can be can be huge to how the match, you know, continues. Um, I don't know if, it, if I hit the double first dart or what, but finishing is is the biggest part of the game. You know, you can score as well as you want, but if you don't hit your finishes, you know, you're not going to win legs. And... Um, you know, I feel I, I managed to nick the first set. Um, obviously, went two, two all in the in the second set, and it was my throw, and I went out at 14, I think it was, 64 and two darts. And, um, you know, I didn't look back from there, and obviously, if you're 2 new up, there's a lot of pressure on someone that's chasing the game from 2 new down, you know, and, um, you know, I've said before in previous interviews that I want Noppet to win his next game because I want to beat him so bad. You know, obviously, I've never beaten Danny Noppet before, I think he's the only one now in the top 32 that I haven't beaten in the past. And, um, you know, I may say this and he may smash me 4 0, you know, it might happen. But, you know, I want to try and turn the tables on um, on Noppet next after Christmas. Do you look at little things like that in your, your record against other players? Yeah, 100%. Like, um, there's games against Noppet. You know, I played him in the, at the Players' Champs finals a couple of years ago. I was 5 2 up. Ended up just. Just didn't not hitting a thing from being five two up and losing six five and you know that really hurt for a little while. Um, obviously, I played him in the European Championships this year and we both averaged one hundred and one. It was a good game. You know he's got one seventy and at the right time and that's, that really hurt and you know other things and obviously he's a real he's a he's a class player. Probably doesn't get the the credit he deserves. Um, but yeah, I, I I hope I play him next round. So you have a little chuckle with George Noble, did you, <laughs> you miscount? Yeah, he said that I hit a treble seven, and I couldn't believe that. I was like, you're talking rubbish, aren't you, man? Like, I can't remember what I had left. What, what did I have left? you probably tell me. Um, 97, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I, he said I hit treble seven in tri instead of a 19. But, yeah, good job I didn't hit the, <laughs> hit the double 12 was on the bus, and I'd have backed down to a, a zero, but, because I sort of, he said I had 22 left, and I sort of half questioned it. Like, obviously, I went up to him and said, I'm sure he had 19 and treble 18 to the double 12. Um, but, it, like, you know, obviously, my, my eyesight is probably my biggest weakness in the game, and, um, you know, I was lucky enough to get away with it. What's it been like since the Players' Championship final? How, how have you taken it all in getting to that, that major final, and have expectations now changed because of that? Um, not really. Obviously, I enjoyed a lot. I enjoyed it getting to the final. Um, you know, it was a massive amount of experience for me, never been in that position before. And, you know, the pressure that surrounds being in even a semi-final when I was playing Brendan, because I feel like there's a lot of pressure on both of us because it was a huge opportunity for both of us to reach a major final. And, um, you know, I didn't play well in that game, but I got through. Um, but you can, you can sort of... It's, from the quarterfinal to the semi-final, you can feel it in the crowd that it's just a different kind of pressure, and that's something that I've never felt before, um, and that's something that I'll learn from and and go forward from from here. Right, Cheers, mate. Thank you, Brian. Just on Willie there, I mean he was a nine dot hero in that first game. Do you think that carried over and there was a lot more pressure on him in this game? Yeah, perhaps. Look, I went up to him and you know before the game started and. We were in the back room practicing, and I said, "Look, I hope you hit another nine because you know, I'd like I'd like for him to win the money and the crowd. Who you know, if someone's in the crowd to win the money?" Um, I was practicing with a couple of friends, um, and I think that's probably one of the only games that I watched because you know that was who I was going to play in in my first game, and that was a fantastic game. I think you know Bradley played a great first set, um, and he missed what was it six nine darts to win the first leg in the next set, and he sort of he sort of dipped from there really um, and I felt like you know if you can just sort of play solid you don't have to play your you know your A game to 
to really blow him away, just sort of put constant pressure on him and, you know, put him under pressure and hopefully he sort of buckles a little bit. Um, you know, I feel like I did that quite well. Um, and he, he didn't really hit a huge amount, you know, so he sort of gave me an easy patch through. I think the second set, um, I took out 64 and two darts to, to go 2 0 up, and, you know, for a 14 darter, and I think that sort of changed the game really. You talked about how loud the crowd was for an afternoon session. Yeah, not often you hear them like that. No, what no, that was then? unreal. I was, I couldn't believe it. It felt like mine had all over again. Like, you know, I put, I, you know, I'm not huge on social media, but I put on Facebook that, you know, after I played Peter Wright and I was collecting my runner up trophy, and they were chanting my name that, you know, that would stay with me forever. And, you know, that will. And, you know, it's sort of, it was sort of close to that. And, you know, it's the first round game, you know. So, you know, if I managed to get a bit further in this tournament and hopefully the crowd are behind me, um, you know, who knows what the crowd will be like. Are you noticing a little bit after mine? Have you got a little bit more support, maybe getting more messages? And when you're out there, you've got people that are behind you. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I got a story that um, just after mine, Ed, I was, I took my, my, you know, my kids were at school. And you know, I took my girlfriend out for a meal in the, for lunchtime, and um, we sat there having our meal. And the waiter came over and he said, "Oh, look, I've got a, I've got this bit of paper for you." And I was like, "All right, okay, fair enough." And um, this bit bit of paper said, "Oh, you know, um, well done in the final. I feel like you should have won." And blah blah blah. And it's from an old guy that was sort of sat over in the corner, and you know, he could have come up and disturbed me in the middle of my meal. Like I wouldn't have minded. I'd have come up and spoke to him. But he, you know, he sent me a message and, you know, just little things like that sort of make you realise what you've done in the game. Um, and I feel like I've got a lot more to give. Cheers.